Hello. In this video I'm going to show you a vast free antivirus or a vast 8 as they're calling it now. And I'm going to begin by opening the web browser and typing in CNET and then Avast. And I'm going to click on the Avast free antivirus CNET download.com link. Next I'm going to click on the download now button. If you have the option to run, go ahead and run. I'm going to save the file. And I'm going to click on the download button here. And I'm going to click on the executable file for Avast. And to begin, I'm going to install the Avast free antivirus. Unless you want Google Chrome installed along with Avast, you will want to uncheck these boxes here. If you leave them checked, you'll have Google Chrome installed also. And now I'm going to click the Express Install button. I'm going to agree to the End User License Agreement and click Next. And down below here you can see Avast has a free security app for Android also. This is going to take a couple minutes, so I'm going to pause the video. And last, it gives us registration information. It says you now have 30 days of protection. During the next couple of weeks, we will prompt you to register the free version or purchase our premium protection. And when the 30 days is up, if you haven't registered, you'll have to uninstall Avast and then reinstall it again. So I'm going to show you how to register the product. I'm going to click Next. It says Setup is finished, so I'm going to click Finish. Here's the icon it left on the desktop. Welcome to Avast. And this is the interface of Avast. As you can see, it has kind of a Windows 8 feel to it with the tiles, and that's why they call it a Vast 8 now. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Settings. And it looks like a lot, but it really isn't. And I'm going to go through this really quick with you guys. In Basic Settings, you can select whether or not to have the Vast icon show in the system tray. And you can also animate the icon. By checking this box, a Vast would show a welcome message on the Windows boot screen and that works on Windows 7 only. By clicking this box, the Avast special scan such as Windows Explorer right click scan and the screensaver scan will be visible and configurable via the Avast user interface. And under behavior, you can have the scan results show as soon as the scan is finished. I'm going to leave that unchecked. If you leave it unchecked, it will only show scan results when something's actually found and there's something to show. I'm going to go to updates. Here you can configure when you want your updates to run. You have the engine and virus definitions along with program updates. And under update perimeters, you have two choices. The first choice is I only connect to the internet using a dial-up modem. And the second choice is my computer is permanently connected to the internet. So I'm going to check the bottom one. There's also details. Under details, you can have the vast ask for reboot when needed show notification boxes after automatic updates and also show notification boxes if an error occurs. Here you can set the interval between updates. Right now mine set at 240 minutes. So about every four hours it runs an update. Under cloud services there's reputation services by checking this box. Reputation services allow Avast to make more intelligent decisions by querying the Avast file reputation database. And then there's also streaming updates. Streaming updates allow Avast to always stay up to date against the latest threats. Pop-ups. You can have Avast generate monthly reports. Down below under pop-up duration, there's four different pop-ups. There's info pop-ups, update pop-ups, warning pop-ups, and alert pop-ups. You can select how many seconds you want them pop-ups to show. And I usually set mine to one so they just pop up and go right back down again. And you can't set it to zero, believe me, I've tried. Next, I'm going to go to Virus Chest. Here you can set the maximum size of the virus chest. You can also select the maximum size of files to be sent to the virus chest. Under Virus Alerts, Avast will send alerts and notify other users when a virus is found. Under Global Exclusions, you can select what paths or URLs to exclude from the scans. You can password protect Avast. Under Browser Integration, you can use the controls on this page to configure the protection of the web browsers. And it says this includes WebRep, 
and sandboxing. And I'm using Mozilla Firefox, and right now it says the security plugin is installed, but AdBlocker is not installed. So I'm going to install AdBlocker. And then the changes won't take effect until I restart the browser, which I'm not going to do at this time. Under Web Rep and Anti Phishing, the controls on this page allow you to configure the behavior of the Avast browser plugins. And right now I have the box checked to enable Web Rep. Web Rep is just like Web of Trust, it rates sites based on user input, and you can also enable the phishing filter. Under Site Correct, this feature automatically fixes spelling errors when you type an address to the browser's address bar and the box is checked to enable site correct and I'm also going to check the automatically redirect to correct sites box. Under silent gaming mode here's where you can select how often Avast displays messages on the screen. The first one's silent gaming mode and if you check this one no Avast messages, pop-ups, alerts will be displayed. The second selection is silent if a full screen application is running and I'm going to leave that one checked and I'm also going to check the first one under status bar, here you can select which of asset components will be monitored by the status bar. And I'm just going to leave mine the way they are. And I'm going to go to language. Here you can select the language for the Avast user interface. I'm going to leave mine in English. I'm going to go to sounds. Here you can enable Avast sounds. And down below under events, Avast will make a sound for threats detected, suspicious items detected potentially unwanted programs, when a scan is complete, and when the automatic updates are complete. Down below under voiceovers, you can also use voiceover sounds which I'm going to uncheck. If you leave this box checked every time a pop-up pops up, there will also be a voice that tells you what the pop-up is. And I'm going to go to account. Here you can connect the Avast installation with an online account. I'm just going to leave that alone and I'm going to go to community. You can participate in the Avast community. If you leave this box checked, you're giving your consent to anonymously forward certain security related information to Avast. And then under community features, here you can control which community features will be displayed in the Avast user interface. And the first one is show Avast recommendation features, which I'm going to uncheck. And the second one is show social networking features, and I'm going to uncheck that one also. And again, this is a matter of preference. Next, I'm going to go to Maintenance. On this page, you adjust the Avast housekeeping settings. Under Auto Cleanup, you can select how often Avast should delete the scan logs. Right now, mine's set to 30 days. Delete temporary scan logs older than one day. You can also set the maximum size of each log file. And you can enable debug logging. You can back up your Avast settings. Again, you can also protect your Avast settings with a password. Under Software Updater, you can select to either allow updates of system-wide products for administrators only, or you can automatically download updates if possible. I'm going to leave that checked, and I'm going to go to Troubleshooting. It says the controls on this page can help to solve various problems. And the first one is Enable Rootkit Scan on System Startup. Enable Raw Disk Access during a Avast Boot Time Scan. You can skip checking of digital signatures of infected files. You can enable the Avast self-defense module. And I'm going to check this one for do not use Chrome as Avast default browser because I use Firefox. You could also load Avast services only after loading other system services. And you can limit program access for guest accounts. You can restore Avast to the factory settings. And you can also troubleshoot the network redirection module. So now we've been through all that, everything is set, I'm going to click OK. And now we're back to the interface, and there's seven tiles. The first tile is telling you the status of your computer, it says it's secured, everything is up to date, and all shields are active, silent mode is on. You also have scan, software updater, statistics, market, and then there's safe zone and firewall. Safe zone and firewall are not available with the free version, which is why it's saying activate now above them. Up top there's four tabs, there's the Home tab, Security tab, Maintenance, and Support. And I'm going to begin by going to the Security tab. This will show you all your shields, it will show you how many files have been scanned by each shield. 
and how many infections have been found. And it also shows that cloud protection is working. Reputation services are enabled. Streaming updates are also enabled. And the connection is established. Under antivirus, this is where you can select what type of scan to run. There's quick scan, full system scan, removable media scan. You can select a certain folder to scan. And then there's also boot time scan. And next it shows the shield's traffic in real time. You have the mail shield, web shield, peer-to-peer -peer shield, instant messaging shield, network shield, script shield, and behavior shield. There's also a software updater. This will tell you if any of the programs installed on your system need to be updated. Right now mine are all up to date. And usually what I'll do is I'll uncheck this box to show up to date programs. That way it will only show me programs that need to be updated. Next I'm going to go to tools. The Avast Browser tool will clean up any unnecessary toolbars. You can block certain sites. Well, and you can also access your computer anywhere by using Access Anywhere. It's a nice remote desktop feature. Now I'm going to go to Maintenance. This is where you can update the engine and virus definitions and you can update your program also. And here's the registration. This is where you would register so you don't have to reinstall after 30 days. So I'm going to click Register now. And then I'm going to click on the select button for the base protection. I'm going to select the register with my email address. And that's all there is to it. Now it's registered I don't have to worry about reinstalling it for another 366 days. So I'm going to close this out. If you had a license key you could also upgrade the product by inserting your license. You can view scan logs. You can view the virus chest. Here's your option for remote assistance. And then under support, of course, they give you a lot of different avenues to go for support. And I'm going to go back to home. Next, I'm going to go to scan. And it's going to automatically run a quick scan for me. And that's a VAST free antivirus, or a VAST aid if you want to call it that. Very, very good antivirus. It's CNET's number one download. Over a million downloads. It's about 500,000 downloads above the second highest download. So it's a very popular antivirus. I've been using it for quite a while, and it's very good at catching malicious files or programs. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.